Yeah. Just show that, would you? This? Yeah. Oh, this thing's busted. Well, okay, but <laughs> show us where it's busted. It's right, right here. Oh, yeah. It's, it's and how many pieces of wood is it? 300. 300. Wow. That's beautiful. Tell us about this, too, while you're at it. Oh. Uh, this is just a, a piece of spalted birch that I uh, got at my wife's uh, high school reunion. And um, I just hollowed it out and made it into a, a bowl. And uh, I really like uh, to turn this. Yeah. I would say, oh, probably five, six hours, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, working on it. I, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, you creep up on it, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> Anyway, well, let's um, get your reaction. Okay. After studying um, Exodus, after studying the tabernacle that Moses built very carefully, after studying various theories about which acacia wood was the shittim was. But I, but I think I've located it. The shittim wood in Israel has a white flower. The shittim wood in Arabia, where Moses was in Midian, has a yellow flower. Okay. And it has propagated uh, up over Asia Minor, at least, you know, I don't know for how long, since Noah, and uh, into India. And it is uh, a sacred wood for Indians. They build their temples out of it. Okay. And it's called Acacia Nilotica. So this blog from Furnishack caught my eye because it said, how good is babul wood for furniture? Going down, it says, when determined the type of wood to use in your furniture, it is essential to ensure that you have the best selection. This will ensure that you put into consideration the quality of your furniture and as a result. And I believe it also is the temple wood for the Japanese. That's another, another story. You mean like their Buddhist temples? Not a Buddhist temple, a Shinto temple. Shinto. Shinto is very particular about that, and they build them in a pattern very similar to the tabernacle of Moses, with the same elements, the place of washing, the place of sacrifice, the place of, of the showbread, the place of the Holy of Holies, and so on. It's a three-compartment temple. Before we go any further, let me explain a little for those who don't know. Mikoshi is a traditional ritual that happens at some Japanese festivals. Mikoshi is the name of the portable Shinto shrine that people carry around. Followers believe it serves as a vehicle to transport the god while moving between its main shrine and it throughout the neighborhood and spread its power among the people. This is what is the project right here. Let you open it and I'll explain it as you open it. Here's another one in case we want to do two just to see what the quality was like. This is the only one I have opened. This uh, one? This one. I have 25 cases of that box site, four each, in my garage right now from India. Now, first thing is look at the bottom since you've got the bottom up. And uh, what do you think of the wood? What does it look like to you? Well, it's medium in color. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe leaning towards uh, dark. So this this is teak wood. Uh huh. Um, this is a hard wood. I can tell already. Mm -hmm. um, both by its weight and its. Uh, but it's got um, it's got a really nice grain pattern. Mm -hmm. It kind of, it almost reminds me. I'm sure it's this is higher quality. But it almost reminds me of black walnut. 
Sure does, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, black walnut has both large and, you know, uh, streaked and some really tight grain. And um, so. All right. Well, now kind of turn it over and kind of look at the outside and tell me, assess for me the finish that you're looking at. Okay. And then I so I'm just going to guess that um, there's, uh, it's, it's been stained, mm -hmm. uh, the color that it is. Yeah. But you can, you can see the wood grain pattern still. Yeah. You know, through the, through the stain. Um, and it's probably has, if I was to guess, it probably has more than one layer of finish. Mm -hmm. And it probably ends up either with a shellac. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it would be a varnish. Or, um, um, I, I would think, well, it come, shellac comes from bugs. Yeah. Oh, there's some, um, I don't know the significance, uh, and I'm not sure uh, what these leaves represent, but it's, it's the pattern and it's the, let's see, but it's, it's a pretty pattern mm -hmm. and you got uh, two rows above, below, two rows above, and then this. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it could have been done by hand as well, but prob probably each thing done at a time. Mm -hmm. And if it was stamped, and it could have been, they would just, you know, place it, stamp it, and then move on until they had finished. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It wasn't done with a router. It wasn't. But I don't think it was done completely by hand tools either. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're all too, they're too exact to be have done completely by the hand. A corner, does he have a corner pattern or did he miss the corner? Miss the corner. No, it's, it's there. Yeah. What would you, uh, just assessing it on a retail level, what would you pay for that box? But you know? let's just say, if I was to make it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, if, you I, made it. if I was to try to, if I was to make this, mm -hmm. and looking at the hours, mm -hmm. you know, and even it, it would be somewhere between 20 and 40 hours. I have, I have no idea. That's Depend a long time. It is. Mm -hmm. And I, I have no idea. I mean, some things you can do really fast, but then you obviously have to slow down mm -hmm. when you get into the details. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what do you think's in there? So when you open it, look at the uh, joints and look at what the finishes are inside. Okay. And tell us what you think. Okay. So, um, I, it's got a blue velvet or felt. Mm -hmm. Top or bottom. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, these are mitered joints. Mm -hmm. These are separate pieces. Mm -hmm. It's got. It's interesting. It looks like it was cut from a piano hinge. Mm, actually, cut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cut and drilled, and then they. So a piano hand just real long, yeah. right? And they cut them, it looks like, and uh, drilled holes in them to put them together. Mm -hmm. Actually, they did a, a pretty good job, really. Yeah. yeah, you can do whatever you want with it. Well, I thought I smelled soap. Is this myrrh? Mm -hmm. Is it is that the lumpy one or the crusty one? Yeah, that's myrrh. Yeah. Yeah. You know what that was used for? I do. Yeah. Okay. Comes from the tree. Mm hmm And that it's actually the sap from a tree, mm -hmm. from the myrrh tree. Interesting. 
Mm-hmm. Frankincense. Frankincense, yeah. <laughs> so what would go in that center piece? Gold. Gold, yeah. The most interesting thing about this to me is the wood. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can appreciate the workmanship. I probably would, uh, myself, would have put a lot more into the finish mm-hmm. just because that's who I am. But it doesn't mean that, um, that that would be the right thing to do. Some things aren't, aren't supposed to be perfect. They're supposed to look and feel handmade. Mm-hmm. And that's that's their beauty and their. Mm-hmm. In your opinion, is that handmade? Yes, with some machines. With some machines. Yeah. In other words, some of the some of the cuts uh, look like they were. Now these are either really good craftsmen with hand tools, mm-hmm. you know, and particularly how level the outside is. Mm-hmm. But you can see the top, you know, was worked and, and the wood was sanded and stuff. But it, it looks like it was all done by hand on the outside okay. or, or the top. Uh, with the exception of that this is a separate piece mm-hmm. and maybe it came out, maybe it came out of some things and then this was all done by hand, this bevel. Mm-hmm. So what what tool would they have used for that? Would it be a plane? What would it have been? Uh, it could have been a hand plane, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, someone would have had to have been pretty good. And, to make it that square, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, probably what they would have done is they would have planed both sides uh, going the whole distance of a, a long piece of wood. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, they would have cut it to the right size, mm-hmm. and then they would have planed the ends separate. So these they would have done in parallel, and then they would have done these last. But end grain is hard to plane without splitting. And so um, what they may have done is uh, worked a lot with sandpaper after they got it to the basic rough. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can see it's made in India. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Looks pretty consistent, doesn't it? It does. Mm-hmm. This is, um, I love this wood, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, this would be... I mean, would you like to buy a chunk of it to turn on your lathe? It's possible, yeah. And if it were... Very interesting. Hole there, but do you like the look of the crucible? Um, yes, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure that it, in at least in my mind, that it's historically um, accurate. But although, but it actually is for it goes with these. Yes, uh-huh. because <clears throat> this in and of itself. Uh, gives off certain fragrance, but you heat it up and it... Really, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's an incense. Yeah, it would... And there's also... They also used it as a healing ointment and balm. Right. Um, They'd grind it up and and they'd also anointed the dead, right? uh, Yeah, they would make a a salve or... And they would put it on things or they would actually drink it. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. So the, there's a lot of there's a lot uh, of reasons to have this to go with it, and then that's very good of you to. I don't know if you instructed them as to what to do, mm-hmm. but if you did, it it does make perfect sense to me. Yeah. And it, if it is to represent that they were men of of substance, or if if they were people of influence. And they could afford. They would bring. They would bring the best that they had, because they knew who he was. Right. Um, now, one thing the box, in my opinion, is missing. 
See if you agree. Is up in the up in the lid. On the inside. In the inside would be a uh, linen bound book, booklet, pamphlet, with the story of the box in it. That looks kind of handmade. Would sit up in there. So it would be a little pamphlet, a little booklet. Can we return just a little bit to this? Yeah. And yeah. your and your boss. Yeah. So. I would think if I were him, mm -hmm. if I were him, and particularly for uh, those who are who worship with him mm -hmm. or believe as he believes, right. that I would want something uh, that was as close symbolically and every other way as you as you could get. Be an interesting thing to explore. I don't know what that would be. Uh, Moses' uh, symbol that we can find at Midian, at Sinai, where the mountain is melted. That's a recent development. We know where it is. And the uh, Saudi Arabians are uh, capitalizing on it. They put up, cordoned off a big area, 10, 40 miles square, something like that. And they said, this is not for Sharia law, because they want... Christian and Jewish community to bring their money into that uh, mountain of Moses. And his, his symbol was a lamb because Israel's symbol is a lamb. Your, your boss. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in what he wants to accomplish here. How can I help? Well, first of all, um, I kind of I like the finish on your bowl better than the stained finish. Uh, what's your opinion on that? You mean on these? Mm -hmm. If if it were more like your bowl, would that be better? Um, I will tell you mm -hmm. that they did not have stain anciently like this. Right. I will tell you that he he doesn't like his initial reaction was it's not handmade. I'm glad that you thought it is. Uh, he hasn't seen it in person yet. He wants something that really grabs you off the off the shelf and says, I want to give that to my grandchildren. To me, or I want my grandchildren to say, I want that, Grandpa. And so to me, I, I would add the story uh, of the lamb, the little book of the lamb. Maybe it's a lamb skin uh, uh, covering. It has... You know, 60 pages or something in it, 50 pages of a story. I would put the gold, frankincense, and myrrh in as a representation. Okay. Of, so would you remediate the boxes in front of you to the finish that you have? Would you strip it off and put that finish on it? Would you do it? Would you try out a one and see if it's even possible? Sure. I'll be okay. happy to... Uh, take the finish off mm -hmm. and try not to destroy the, the pattern. Yeah, right. And make it look kind of like you'd say, hmm, there it looks good. Um, well, at least make an effort. This has, I don't know what kind of nails these are. I didn't see them here as much, but there are nails that nails this top to mm -hmm. this Ridge. And so because of that, they're they're gonna get revealed in It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. You're only gonna de you're only gonna remediate deface one. What would you charge me to do that? I don't know. I expect your time to be free. Just well, I um just to get it refinished for me, uh would you charge me by the hour? How how do you want to do that? Uh, I don't know. So you're just going to have me take this finish off mm -hmm. and put something like this on. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. To kind of make, to bring out the grain as my boss wanted. I'd also like you to think about um, what else you would do to the box. Would you put it on a little platform with legs? Um... Would you, would the platform have a gold leaf around it? 
Would the legs, uh, you know, so they don't break off? Would they? I want you to think about that. How would you beautify it to make it look worth $300? Yeah. That's what it's got to be. It's got to be worth $300 with the gold and everything in it. And the gold would be probably casting beads or it would be um, uh, coin, uh, sterling silver coins that are gold plated. Something that's beautiful um, for the gold. It's a representation. It's a symbol. So that's what your challenge is. And uh, if you, if you want to help me with it, I would appreciate it. Then we can get the instructions back to India uh, for another go. So um, if, I, if I understand this right, you don't want any of this color anywhere. Right? No, I don't know. I want you to beautify it. I don't know what I want. Okay. I want your creativity to come out, not mine. Do you want it to look handmade? Yes. Do you want it to shine? No, boss doesn't like to shine. Okay. I think he well, likes this, your this doesn't shine. Right. Hardwood um, is what this is. This is this is great as far as durability mm -hmm. and um, and look. So in taking in taking this off, mm -hmm. um, but the the bigger the bigger challenge the, that's not the challenge. Right. I can take that off. Right. The challenge is is making it um, look handmade. Mm -hmm. Well, you mean the finish handmade or the box? Well, the box. In, in some ways, looks handmade. I mean, because it's uneven, it's not mm -hmm. perfect. Right. You know, the, the things I do, um, when, I, when I get a super smooth surface, mm -hmm. um, that means I worked pretty diligently to get that. Right. Um, but it also tends to take out all, all the imperfections that you see an uneven surface. If I did that, it would look machine done. Yeah, and no, we, don't, we don't want that. We don't want that. No. So, um, so I have, I'll have. Because we want it, to, we want it to be able to go out as an instruction to India again when we order the next round. Okay. Well. Uh, one thing you could do, obviously, is tell them don't stain it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Obviously, and we'd like to we'd like to see what comes out of it. So that's what you're doing for us. Is your yeah? I'm, I can I can do that. I can take this stain off or this finish off, and then you're gonna we'll see some stuff at that point. Mm -hmm. And there are probably some things that I can do. Well, I know there are things I can do uh, to make it look handmade. Okay. But um, what you want to do is take what I do, give it to India, and say, do this. Yep. That's what you want to do. Yeah. And that is a good thing to That's, do. Yes. And we're going to, you know, we're going to keep them employed. And No, good. We're going to, you know. Very good. They need work. We need uh, sales. So that's the point and then think about the legs again think about the platform whether it should have one or not um, these are design preferences um, if you mocked one up be great um, I could get you some gold leaf if you wanted to gold leaf something um, do do you have um anything uh, uh, going back to about the time era that's that's authentic in its in its look um, okay I don't but I'll look for something with you yeah yeah because do I think they made a box like this probably not probably not you know but 
a little um I actually I do. Um Ravi Sharma, who's our contact in India, has a lot of antiquities in his home. He does? He does. I can give you I can send you those. Do you have a telegram account or a or a WhatsApp account? I'm not sure. I have all I have is email. Okay. And you're an email guy. I did want to share something with you um, mm -hmm. about wood. Yeah. Um, this just came to me. Uh, I can't explain it, but um, I, I, it's just, I like the way information can come, uh, even if it's not completely accurate. Um, it, it is kind of a journey, but I was reading something about one of the statements in the scriptures that says that it is the life and the light uh, and the law by which all things are governed. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in my pondering, I, I realized that every, everything on this planet is uh, influenced and or you, me, everything, this wood, this, yeah, everything. We're also under the laws of entropy, which means yeah. things eventually won't, they, they will go back to matter unorganized. Correct. And so uh, that is going to happen unless there's a power that gets uh, brought to bear where it does, where it stops degrading. Like, yeah, correct. Right. Which uh, apparently uh, that is the process that um, that the creator can bring to bear, mm -hmm. uh, where things no longer degrade, both people and animals and plants and things like that. But anyway. Nothing would even hold together if it wasn't for this light which caused life to, to happen. And so um, it kind of holds everything together so we can work with it and make things and um, do some things of, of our own free will uh, and um, it gives us an opportunity also to learn and to grow, uh, which I love. I love it. Um, so there's a, I have a little bit of passion about life, but, but, um, I think that's, that could be part of the story of this box. Uh, Mike Stevens, uh, talk on entropy, uh, talk on the creator. Creator's common between my boss and me. Right. Yes. It's the same God. Yeah. But I, I would like to to say um, I appreciate everyone's contribution, mm -hmm. but there is only one who created the universe. There isn't two. There isn't ten. There isn't a thousand. There is one. Mm -hmm. so if he's not offended at my inherited lies mm -hmm. and if I'm doing the best I can and if I feel his inspiration and his spirit and his blessings in my life then I will I will apologize for my ineptness well but I could if I can do better I'll do better that's the point right yeah and it's those who love him keep his commandments which are the law and they're found in the first five books of Moses. Yeah, I get that. But I think I could do better. I really do. So do I. And I, I do I believe do that one day we will be taught better. Mm -hmm. Well, and there then, may be there may be those that are chosen and that are that truly were first and blessed because of their righteousness and their. I mean. When they were good, they were really good. <laughs> and he was their God. And when Moses came, 
into Egypt and, and freed them. He truly pr protected them at, with his power. And they did proclaim, there is no one beside him. So uh, we, ca we cannot, but, and, you know, without them, we wouldn't have the knowledge of him that we have. Right. So we That's, are truly... Is that second Nephi? Yeah. Well, at, or what, when that, what, there, what there and other places, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you just think about it, mm -hmm. we wouldn't even have the Bible if it wasn't for... Correct. Some you know, the, the Lord did not give us <clears throat> necessarily a thousand roads to him. Right. And, All roads to Mount Fuji. Right. I mean, I, you know, and the way is I, narrow. He he has revealed his truth, and it's over a long period of time. And mm -hmm. it's true that it's gone through many translations, and and that there's been a lot of people involved, and that that some maybe even not knowingly uh, did what they thought was right, but but it wasn't. It's right. possible. Absolutely. You know, um, but, and so all we have to do is, is uh, once we have that connection to the Lord, I think if we stay in touch with it, we probably won't go astray. But I have to admit, there's, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. I have to admit that. And, well, you know, the first thing we confront is our lies. We're liars, and we do it for various reasons, and we protect our sins from our with our lies. And uh, Lord, He can't He can't abide that at all. He didn't want any of that, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, so this is this is my wife. She's, oh, wonderful. Well, I should get out of your hair. Hello. Hi. I'm Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan. Jonathan Felt. He lives in Spanish Fork. I live on Mill Road. Okay. And um, I guess you have a wife and... I have a wife and seven children. They're all out of the Hines except one. Uh, she's our uh, caboose and she's in junior... No, she's a sophomore in high school. Anyway, he's he's brought me something to look at. and uh, He works for uh, presenting one of